Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Right now, it's time for the paper review to see what the national dailies are saying this morning and just taking headlines, um, making rounds across um, Nigeria. And right now, to review the paper with us is Chris Kendi Wandu. He's a member of the Chattered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK and is joining us from here in Lagos State. Good morning, Mr. Chris. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Okay, so let's just dive right into the papers. We'll be starting with the punch this morning. Um, and one, one of the small headline on the top here, that's where I would like to start, says minimum wage. Private st sector, states force labor push for one million naira. So minimum wage, private sector, states force labor's push for one million naira. What do you think about this one? Do you think one million naira is too much? to ask for the minimum wage? Um, or do you think maybe it's even too little? Do you think we should be looking at the value of the dollar? So everything right now should be at the current value of the Naira to the dollar. But what do you just think about this whole minimum wage thing? Well, I think we should stop planning uh, to me. Uh, and uh, uh, I don't know the rationale behind uh, and how they came about one million Naira minimum wage for Nigerian workers. And, uh, the take home of most workers, even in Nigeria now, in a year is up to not up to one million naira. I, I totally agree that um, there should be an increment in minimum wage of Nigeria workers. Uh, situation of things, uh, current economic situations, it shows Nigerians are practically, they say the last statistics said about 8.2. 8 million naira, but uh, sorry, it's 8.8 .8 million Nigerians are under severe poverty and, and line, you know. So, uh, I, I think it's more than that. For me, I would, I would say about 80 percent or 90 percent of Nigerians, even the so called, uh, there's nothing, you know, we used to have upper class, middle class, and lower class, mm -hmm. but now there's nothing like a middle class again, just the upper class and those of us in the uh, down the ladder. Um, so, um, so I totally agree that the current economic uh, situation makes it uh, necessary for us to have um, a change and uh, an upward review of the minimum wage. Uh, whatever it will be is okay. The clamoring for one million naira is just taking it over. But who is going to pay that? Don't forget that currently the minimum wage is about thirty thousand naira uh, or thereabout, and most states in Nigeria cannot pay that thirty uh, thirty thousand naira. Most of Nigerian states cannot pay that. They are not paying. So if you are saying that uh, you want to now increase this, uh, we want to increase this from 30,000 to 1 million. So what will happen? Where will they get such money from? So, but I believe that uh, the poor has not done his job well. The labor has dropped his ball. When, we, when they expect them to perform or be able to represent Nigerians uh, perfectly, you see dropping the ball. And religion on what they did. So every now and then you see the um, hydro led NSC giving government ultimatum 24 hours before the expiration of the ultimatum is just uh, a bad. So I don't, Nigerians don't even believe in this uh, uh, labor union as it were. But as I said, there's a need for us to have it. And the, the earlier this is done, the better. Uh, the former governor of Lagos once said that, uh, I think last week, he said that uh, states should be left to determine what the minimum yeah. wage would be. Do you buy that as well? Because now, even some states, now that they say it's a blanket thing, some states are still not paying 30,000 naira minimum wage. Do you buy the idea that states should be allowed to determine what their minimum wage would be? Because for some states, right, even the 30,000 naira is not enough. Mm -hmm. So for living in, let's, let's use Lagos for instance, the cost of living here is higher because obviously rent is higher, transportation, even food having to come all the way from the north. So do you think um, each state should be able to actually carve their own out and say, okay, this is the cost of living here and the minimum wage should be based on that cost of living? Well, it's and what refrigeration means that every component of that, that unit is is, uh, is independent of each other. Federal government is different from the state government. The state government is different from um, the federal government. That is the constitution. 1999 constitution as amended, which we are operating, gives every uh, every uh, uh, three tiers of uh, govern, uh, uh, governance as it is 
the federal state government as well as the government, the autonomy of the world. So I totally agree with you. Each state should be able to negotiate that the federal government cannot uh, be on this, uh, sit on its uh, high horse and not be determining what states are going to pay. Because you don't know my weight bill, you don't know how much I'm, 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 I'm getting as an idea. How can you compare a state like mine, Igbo state, Lagos state, and you say that you put a blanket uh, this thing, or with that of river states that gets much from the federal account, uh, uh, ISA, Delta, and the rest of them, with states like uh, the ones in Bono or the ones in uh, uh, Yobe and the rest of them. So I think the federal, what should happen now, everything should be allowed to. And when you're talking of minimum, you know, when we talk minimum, we most often than not, we're only talking about the federal government workers and the state government workers. What of the private sector? Nobody talks about the private sector. So it's only when you say the minimum wage, this one million that you say they are clamoring for. It is for federal government and workers, civil servants, and also state citizens. So, but I agree with you that we should just ask states to be able to determine. They are the ones that are employing these people, and they can be able to determine how much they are going to pay them. And the way it is, if you are not ready to take the pay, then what else or option do you have? It's either you resign or you just take you so bad. I, I totally disagree that the government, federal government should be the ones negotiating and that possible this payment of money on, on the um, state government and the local government, as we rightly said, as I said in my opening, most of the states, over three years now, since the uh, minimum which was increased to, it used to be about 15,000, it was increased to 30,000. Most states till now still can't pay that 30,000. So where are they going to get the one million now? Okay, all right, let's 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 move over to another small headline at the bottom. It says, IMF forecasts $8 billion fall in Nigeria's 2024 foreign reserves. What's your take on this one? Well, IMF can focus on the light. Um, for me, I've thought this because part of the problem we've had since the independence is allowing for um, uh, donor agencies and, and financial institutions. I mean, our destiny. But you can see that other progressive countries like um, China don't even listen to what the IMF, World Bank, or whatever. But they can do that effectively because they don't go cap in hand to borrow money or for funds from He who goes a borrowing goes a sorrowing. And that is what happens because where, the, where you go to borrow, um, uh, that's for the person to give you the money to tell what to do. Let me give you a classical example of what we use in our local palace. Uh, my sister, no. When person borrow your clothes, they go, make a go party. Mm. And you get to the party, and you know the clothes they party, you then dance. <laughs> just they say, ah, make you dance with me, no go to your mind. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> but that is the true reality of the situation. Put it, put it in the cup, uh, but that is the part. So they are going to determine what to do. They. Even the so-called devaluation that is going on, and there has been devaluation several times that is probably going out of... Um, the present is, is not even what is not, is not even worth anything. Uh, we had the naira is about one thousand five hundred to a dollar. We are going back to the to what Venezuela experienced and the, what happened during the days of um, Idi Amin in Uganda and mm -hmm. even um, in the case of Mugabe. And nobody is doing anything to be able to stop this sliding naira and also the cost of living. If anybody told me they need, they need that. I will buy a loaf of bread for 1,500 naira. I will be mm -hmm. Even the agege bread that used to be our stable, my brother, you know, agege bread, we are to the bread now. So, um, so personally, yes, um, IMF, uh, World Bank, or whatever can say whatever they want. But the fact is that we on our own have to grow it. If we were, we are productive enough as we're supposed to be, then we for ourselves in any way. Any country or any donor agency determine uh, what we do. Let us take, for example, the shop. I don't know if it, but you have seen how epileptic the power has been in the past two weeks. In fact, the rate of heat, the heat, what is going to be killing Nigeria now is the heat, the, the heat level around and how hot the weather is. Mm. But we don't have more power. As I'm talking to you, I don't have power in the past three days. I've never had power. I don't have power in my house. You know how much um, a liter of uh, petroleum costs now? How many times to run? Even if I say I'm going to use inverter or whichever one, you know how much it does. So those are the issues. Let us face the fundamental. Let us be able to raise 
our level of productivity. Let us start exporting enough so that we can end enough foreign exchange. By then, then we cannot sit back and look the IMF and walk back in the aisle and say, go here, you don't need your money. We are going to determine what we are going to bet. As much as we go to the IMF and the World Bank and whatever donor agencies or countries, they will continue to determine what you will do with the money they are giving you. And that is the fact. Okay, um, let's move to the Daily Trust uh, newspaper right now. Um, we're going to take something from outside Nigeria, more or less, uh, where, even though it involves Nigeria. It involves ECOWAS. The Niger Junta has vowed that they're not returning to ECOWAS at all. I don't know how, what you see about that, because uh, a lot of people have begun to say that the powers of ECOWAS is dwind dwindling, and um, the three countries leaving uh, ECOWAS will further weaken ECOWAS. What do you think? Yes, um, I agree with you. Before going to that, let us look at straight at the cover of the teletrust. We see there is hardship in the land, and that is by the end. We were studying the wife of the president, the first lady, uh, uh, Mrs. Tinubu, yesterday, who is captain. Um, I heard the, 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 the head of Canada to tell the government and the answer something. We are screaming. And the earlier the government realized that, the better for us. There have been protests in Niger State. From Niger State, we moved to Oshu State. There have been some level of protests in Lagos. And before it, it will escalate and go around. If this is not checked, I'm going to tell you that the NSAS protest is going to be a child's play. If government is not be able to um, uh, live on this and be able to do the right thing by checking the rising cost of living in Nigeria, a hungry man is a green man. And I said it in this program last week. That the rich are not sleeping because the poor are weak. And that is what it is. So, in terms of service and um, trying to say, oh, we are going to open the, uh, uh, the reserves, we are going to give grains, we are going to have, give grains to state, give grains to this. That is not the issue. That is just being cosmetic. It's just like what the Ministry of Material Affairs did the last time. They said they were distributing money to Nigerians and the forest of the poor at the end of the week. So, what is the government doing about the rise of um, living in Nigeria? Bag of rice is more than 7,000 uh, and 70,000 naira now. That's a bag of rice. A mudu of rice, how much is it? Even the same food like gari, how much is a mudu of gari? What of beans, onions, tomatoes, and the light? So those are the issues. And Nigerians are already crying out. It has never been this bad. It has never been this terrible. So the more we look at ourselves, I, just like uh, um, uh, Michael Jackson said in the sub, man in the mirror. You have to be the man in the mirror and look into the mirror. And, so we don't need an EMEA. We don't need a, a, a first class um, OBA or UBA or whatever to take the federal government. We have ministers, we have advisors, and I hope that advising the government right on this issue of rising cost of it. Because it will go to the highest level of insecurity is the inability to feed your people. That is the highest level of insecurity. And also, you have to also look at the issue of insecurity that is rising on the day because it, you tie the two together. Farmers are not going to the farm because they're being kidnapped. Now, what are you doing about insecurity? We're on top of the, we're on top of it. That is what we call it. We're on top of it and on top of it. Despite the fact that we're trying to pay any service to ensure um, insecurity, it's becoming so deadly now that you cannot even move out of your house. If why is it for six o'clock, six p.m. in in the in your houses, and that is that is the best. Even now, I'm even going from house to house. So. The governments must be told. So I hope they are reading newspapers that are seeing what Nigerians are saying. Nigerians are very, very hungry. And as I repeat again, a hungry man is an angry man. Yes, Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso have said that they are no longer members of ECOWAS. In as much as the treaty settlement of ECOWAS said that before you can exit the, uh, the, the union as it were, you have to inform the, um, the organization within a certain period you can say but you cannot force anybody into any marriage if i say i'm not married you that is what it is the worst case scenario will go to court and dissolve this they have come to realize that they are being in um in, in ECOWAS is not helping matters at all and that ECOWAS doesn't seem to understand yes i totally agree some of the stance that you should not encourage the issue of crew in any of the, the ECOWAS states but the party will also ask yourself is that those that are in government, where they doing the right. I'm talking about the civilian, civilians, uh, regions as it were. So I don't think that they could leaders handle the issue properly because 
the inability to that issue properly now open the door for a country like Russia to come in and be able to establish itself in this three places. I think this issue can be resolved diplomatically. Now we are getting some fillers, although not confirmed, that one of the countries has asked Nigeria not to fly over its airspace. I don't know how true that is. If that is going to be the issue, then it's going to be a problem because if they close their airspace, which is closer to Nigeria, that means that should I come into Nigeria, taking that as it, have to go to do a longer route, and which is what is happening in the Red Sea now, between the fight, the fight going on between Israel and Hamas, where huge rebels, uh, rebels have now making life difficult for ship moving on the Red Sea to not take, because of the attack, they are making a longer route, a journey that takes the ships about two, two weeks, they're not taking about five weeks, and that in each level increased the price of flight um, across the globe and causing a lot of um, problems here and there. But as he said, that the economic um, ECOWAS leaders as we are the president can uh, do more diplomatic so, um, um, shortly between this, uh, between ECOWAS, these countries to, to bring them together. Um, you don't just throw away your child because it's naughty or it's bad. You have a way of being able to talk to you. And it's not all children that can behave the same way. But you are still the father. So it is your duty as a man to be able to bring even those that are falling offline to be able to bring them to the table and be able to determine and make sure that everything will. I have my personal opinion on that. But the way the ECOWAS leaders are handling the issue of ECOWAS, and of these three countries, doesn't sound um, diplomatic, diplomatic enough for me. My personal opinion. Anyway. Mm. All right. Well, I know you said something about uh, a hungry man is an angry man, and it's. It's, it's worthy to know that on the Daily Trust, the major headline on that one even says, there's hardship in the land, says um, Kanu Emma. Yeah, so, you already uh, spoke about that. Yeah, yeah, there's hardship in the land. Um, anyway, so I want to move over to The Guardian, and it talks about import duty FX rates raised fourth time in February. Now, 1,444.6 Naira to the dollar. So really, there's hardship in the land. So what do you think about this import duty FX rate that has been raised fourth time for the fourth time in February? We're just a few days into February. This is the 13th day of February, and we're looking at this import duty being raised four times already. Yes, the, you know, international flights are determined uh, in, uh, in foreign currency, and that is what is happening. And that is part of what uh, I'm talking about. Remember the problem we had in the past, sometime in the past, we are because of the cost of the freighting uh, goods and services, uh, especially cars into Nigeria. Most importers bringing vehicles into Nigeria now resorted to uh, uh, Kotonu. You remember what yeah. happened in this period? They would they will rather divert their uh, containers to Kotonu, and from there, Nigerians will lose their imported goods vehicles to now go to Kotonu and bring in those goods. That is also happening now. And that is why you're having the, 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 So that in itself is, is affecting the economy because. Apart from um, the, apart from uh, uh, what we made from um, uh, crude oil sales and what comes from FRS, uh, the next level of uh, income that we made is from customs and also then from the MPA um, um, uh, uh, taxes uh, made on goods coming into Nigeria. So, but uh, as the paper reported, advertisers will raise it. Uh, they raise that tariff. In February alone, that you can imagine, we are, today is what, um, 13th, a day for, to Valentine. And um, um, let me even say happy Valentine to you, my sister, because Thank I might not you. be here tomorrow. So you will say it to me. <laughs> you will say it to me. My friend will not tell you, happy Valentine tomorrow. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you. Happy Valentine's Day to you as well. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Happy Valentine tomorrow. Okay. Well, we continue, you know, we must continue to celebrate. We must continue to Definitely. celebrate. Definitely. You know, Nigerians are too resilient, and that is why our leaders are taking us for mm -hmm. granted, because... You know, they say that we are the happiest people in the world. Right. You see a situation where a, a very big cleric came out to say that the Nigeria problem is a, a, a spiritual. <laughs> and I, I was laughing, spiritual? Instead of blaming our leaders for what we said mm -hmm. that our problem is spiritual. And who does that? That we are not, is, is it that we are not spiritual enough? <laughs> I'm telling you that in Nigeria, we have the highest number of churches in this country than anywhere in the world. Yeah. You know that there is no building. In fact, some buildings in Lagos, we have three churches, one down. Another church in the, in the middle floor. There are buildings with about yeah. six that I know, six, eight even. Yes, I've seen yes, with eight before. It's true. Wow. You have six, you have six flats and you have six various churches. What are we talking about? So it's pretty, and I ask myself, developing, developed countries like China, do they go spiritual? 
how spiritual is a Chinese man? And they, are, they have the, the, one of the Sometimes best Sometimes it's just common world. sense. So, so, so. It doesn't make any sense, my sister. It doesn't make any sense. Let us put the blame where the blame is squarely. And I continue to ask the question, our problem, is it that of leadership or followership? Until we answer that question, we continue to remain where we are. Mm. I think it's followership. Anyway, <laughs> um, we would have loved to continue. We had more time, especially as they say 113.8 million um, Nigerians are undocumented. And I don't know how uh, people are talking about our population. Uh, are we really 220? Are we really up to that? Or are we more than that? We don't even know. We were supposed to have a census uh, last year. We couldn't have it. They are promising us that we are going to have a census this year or sometime like that. So I don't know. 113 undocumented. This is a lump sum. What do you think? Very briefly, because our time is up. Well, 113 uh, uh, or 30, whatever, undocumented. Then the question I ask: what happened to the name that we did? Sort of the name. Yeah. Was the need not meant to capture every Nigerian as it were? Do you think people queue, uh, be aware on the queue for hours during the. Uh, what happened to that information that was gathered? What happened to the information that, that we use daily? The BVN, um, uh, um, FRC license, uh, driver's license. What of the passport? It's so obvious that some people are just branding um, this thing here and there. Because the essence of the need is to be able to capture every Nigerian, irrespective of age, the, that every Nigerian must be captured in the national ID card project that we started over close to 20 years ago. How is it that now we cannot be, not be able to finish it? Do you still have your national ID card? If you have, hasn't it expired? That is Nigeria for you. So I, 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 I don't know. This is one of the countries in the world where you don't have enough data to be able Because even if you don't have the data, then how do you plan? Yeah. We talk of national planning. How do you plan for your people when you don't know the number? Why the U.S. is doing what it's doing? Today? Because he knows every single person in the United States. And that is how you can determine their per capita income. But in Nigeria, nobody knows. We don't even know how many we are. If you go out tomorrow and see a Ghanaian on the street of Lagos, will you know him? That is Nigerian for you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, totally, my brother, when they start bragging all these figures, it's not a system I can make. I don't believe it. It's all the so called statistics. Is this a statistic? They will say that life of Nigeria is improving. Nigeria is the cheapest thing when it comes to cost of living and the rest of them. And MBS will come out with also fake, so many fake um, uh, uh, fake statistics to this visible. But you go to the market, you cannot buy just a just a mudu of Gary, and they're telling you things are improved. It is well. Let's leave it at this that. Is Have well. a wonderful day. <laughs> my dear sister, once again, happy Valentine to you. Thank you Have so a much. Time Thank you. Oh, happy Valentine's Day to you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chris. All right. That's it on our paper review. We've we'll been speaking to Chris Kennedy Wando. He's a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, but who's joining us from here in Lagos State. We'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at our hot topic. Please stay with us. <laughs>